Hello and welcome to our channel, Cheating Exposed. Today, we're revealing another story to uncover the truth behind the lies. So, let's get started. I met my wife, we'll call her Sue, in college. We were both 18 at the time. We hit it off as soon as we went on our first date, and we were saying I love you within weeks of dating. She kind of pursued me, but I was glad as hell that she did. We shared our deepest insecurities and secrets with each other, and when her dad passed away in her senior year of college, I was there for her through the whole ordeal. Her father had pancreatic cancer, and when he was hospitalized, I'd spend nights at the hospital with her so she wouldn't be alone. We got through it together. That point in time strengthened our bond. She told me she didn't know what she would have done if I hadn't been there for her. She called me her soulmate. I knew I was going to marry this girl, and sure enough, I popped the question about two years after we graduated. At that time, life couldn't get any better for me, I married the girl of my dreams, had a well-paying job immediately after graduating, and both our families loved us. My best friend, whom we'll call Dav, and I had what I could only describe as an unbreakable brotherly bond, or so I thought. We had known each other since third grade, and he was the brother I never had. He was also married and had moved away with his wife because she had landed a lucrative job at a big law firm. About a year ago, his wife died in a car crash, and this broke him. He moved back to our hometown after, but he was never the same. I tried to be there for him, but he wouldn't engage with anyone. No one understood the pain he was going through. So, I asked my wife if she could talk to him, seeing as she had also lost a loved one, and that maybe Dav could relate better to someone who went through something similar. Yes, I know now that this was a huge mistake. We'd pay him visits daily. She would spend hours on end at his place, even without me there. They were going on hikes together, watching movies without inviting me, grabbing lunch, doing all the things couples do. Now, obviously, this was far more interaction than I had intended for them to have, and it did make me uncomfortable. But Dav was doing much better because of it. It's important to say that Dav and Sue never liked each other before all this happened. Sue always thought he was a bit of a jerk. Before he married his wife, Dav was bouncing from relationship to relationship, and even after he got with his late wife, he constantly cheated on her. As a result, Sue had a particular dislike for him and always questioned how I could be friends with someone with such low morals. This disdain for Dav is also what made me oblivious to what was to come. As I mentioned, Sue and Dav became inseparable, to the point where she would invite him to things I had planned for us as a couple. Moreover, she started showing what I now know to be classic signs of cheating behavior, always on her phone, becoming increasingly distant, little to no intimacy, and coming home very late. At this point, it was all too suspicious. One day, while she was texting, I asked who she was talking to. She said it was one of her girlfriends, and when I asked to see what they were saying, she became very irritated and called me possessive. When I talked to Dav about how uncomfortable their friendship was making me, he assured me nothing was going on and even accused me of not trusting him and my own wife. I was being gaslit. This continued until one day Sue went out again. She said she was going to her sister's for the weekend because she needed some space from me, claiming I was driving her crazy with my accusations. I was still very suspicious and called her sister to confirm if she was indeed expecting Sue to visit. She confirmed that she was, but Sue had not yet arrived. Mind you, she had left around 3 p.m., and her sister's place is about four hours away from where we live. It was now 10 p.m. Something in the back of my head told me to go to my friend's house, so I did. Sure enough, my wife's car was parked a few feet away from my friend's house. At this point, it was clear as day what was going on, and I hate to admit it, but I cried. Hard. After a few minutes, I decided to go in and see if this was really happening. I went in through the back door, which I knew would be open. I quietly made my way in, and I could hear my wife making sounds of pleasure. I was shaking. When I reached the door of his bedroom, I could see through the crack. My wife was leaning over his nightstand. I'll never get that image out of my head. 
I'm literally crying as I'm writing this down. I pushed the door wide open and they both froze, staring at me. It took every ounce of my being not to beat the living hell out of Dav. I just walked away and got into my car. I could hear them scrambling, and my wife started screaming at me to stop, saying she could explain. I didn't want to look at her. I don't know what I would have done, so I just drove away. I cried the entire drive home, and they were both spamming me with calls. I went to one of my college friends and have been staying here for the past week or so. I can't eat, I can't sleep, and I can't think of anything else. I informed my work about what was going on, and they were kind enough to give me time off. I've been getting phone calls from both Dav and Sue, as well as from both our families. I let my family know I was alright and would be back soon, but I haven't responded to anyone else since. This hurts so bad. I'm trying to be strong, but my resolve is wavering. How can someone you loved so selflessly do this? I don't know what to do. How do I deal with this? Please help me. Update. When I look back on the marriage, most of it was filled with little else but happy memories, which is why I was trying so hard to find a reason to stay. However, when I started thinking about her cheating, how she and Dev gaslit me and made me question my sanity, the only thing I felt was rage. The deeper I looked, the angrier I got. I'll never forget how upset Sue would get when I asked her where she'd been when she came home late, or the disgusted look Dav gave me when I asked him, man to man, if there was anything going on between him and my wife. The cheating was bad enough, and even worse, because it was with my best friend. But the gaslighting. I don't think I'll ever get over it. Fair enough, I was played like the fool I was, but it takes a certain kind of person to lie so effortlessly and convincingly. I don't know how they managed to flip the switch like that. I remember one night, two days before I found out, she came home late and told me how much she loved me and how much she'd been thinking about me on the drive home. Now I'm almost certain she'd come from Dav's because she wasn't even wearing underwear. It's like she had no problem lying to my face. I can't help but feel humiliated, how could I have let them walk all over me like that? The more I reflected, the more I wanted to confront Dalv. But I couldn't. There's no real justice for me, not with our legal system. They get to hurt me emotionally, but if I retaliate, I'm the one who'd end up in jail. I spoke with my lawyer about this, and she urged me not to do anything rash. Not only would I risk jail time, but it would also jeopardize my chances in the divorce. She suggested I see a therapist, but I don't see the need. I'm still being spammed with emails from Sue, which only fuel my anger. She's still saying the same things, going on about how miserable her life would be without me. She even has the nerve to send me Bible verses on forgiveness. If I meant that much to her, why would she do this? I started going back to work because I wanted to be busy. Being distracted has really helped me cope better, and I don't drink as much as I did at the beginning. One day, while at work, I received a letter from Sue. I wanted to just throw it away but decided to read it. In it, she talked about her individual counselling and how it helped her discover some underlying issues she was having with herself. The biggest of all was her low self-esteem. She explained that the discrepancy in our attractiveness made her very self-aware and that, deep down, she wanted to feel desired by someone other than me. According to her, her sister has always been much prettier than her and this contributed to her low self-esteem. She said that even though she knew I was attracted to her, and that I made her feel beautiful, she sought that validation from someone else. She apologized again, and said it wasn't an excuse, but that she was simply looking for a way to ensure it never happens again if I decided to give her another chance. She then proceeded to ask if we could try marriage counseling to work things out. I still didn't respond to anything she or her family sent me at this point, so I just ignored it. Anyway, I started the divorce proceedings, and the first order of business was splitting our finances. Unfortunately, I couldn't untangle myself from her without her consent. We each have separate accounts, as well as a joint savings account. Unfortunately, I can't take what I'm entitled to from it without her. Even though I make significantly more than she does and have contributed the most of the money in that account, 
I'll probably have to split it with her 50 fiftieths. So, I just proceeded with filing the divorce papers. She was served a few weeks ago, and then the chaos started. The very day she was served, she showed up at my apartment with the divorce petition in her hands. I don't know how she found out where I was. We just stared at each other for what felt like forever, and all the pain from that night came back. All the emotions I felt returned with renewed vigor. I almost teared up again, but I didn't. She looked like she had been crying, and she rushed toward me and tried to give me a hug. I gently pushed her away, and this somehow made her hysterical. She started shouting, asking why I was giving up on us so easily and if we could just talk it out. At this point, I figured I just wanted to get away from her. Looking at her gave me a wave of different emotions, so I wanted to get away before I did or said anything I would regret. I tried going back to my car, and she threw herself on the top of the hood. I asked her what she wanted, and she said she just wanted to talk things through, that we couldn't end our marriage in such a manner without at least clearing the air. I relented because she was clearly not taking no for an answer and was making a scene. We got into my apartment, and I just sat down and listened to what she had to say. Again, she said she would do anything to save our marriage, that she doesn't love Dave, and that she's sorry. She said she did some research on how we could move forward and suggested a trial separation. In this separation, she said I could date whoever I wanted, but that I should hold off on the divorce and, at the very least, give her the chance to mend our friendship and then our relationship as husband and wife. She suggested a lot of other outlandish things, like a one-sided open marriage in my favor, tried showing me stories of other couples who have survived infidelity, and even suggested that we should just move to a different state or even a different country, just the two of us. That part kinda hurt me because we had spoken about moving and starting our family not too long before all this happened. When she was done, we just sat there in silence, again staring at each other. I then asked her why. Why him? Why cheat on me with him and then come back only after I caught her? She started sobbing really hard when I asked these questions. She said she felt really guilty even during the acts, but didn't know how to stop. She was so deep in the affair that she didn't think of the consequences and what she was going to lose. She said that counselling made her realise that she probably would have cheated on me at some point, if not with Dave, then with someone else. This was supposedly because of the same underlying issues that she was unaware of. I asked her if she loved Dave, and she promised me she didn't love him. She said they hadn't spoken since I left and that she didn't even know where he was now. She insisted she loved only me and would do anything to make up for what she had done to us. I asked her if she had ever cheated on me before all of this, and she swore on her dead father that this was the first and last time. I then asked her who else knew about her and Dave. She hesitated and said only her sister, but that her sister only knew about it a few days before I found out and that she implored her to end it and come clean to me. You guys who suggested that the sister knew were spot on. I also asked her why she was begging. Why didn't she just leave to be with Dave? I asked her if she was only doing this because she felt it was the right thing to do and not because she actually wanted to be with me. She answered that she was doing it because she loves me and knows she made some horrible choices. We talked for a long time. There was a lot of crying on her end, but not for me. I had cried enough when I first found out and didn't have any more tears to shed over this. Then I asked her if there was anything else she wanted to tell me, if there was anything else she was keeping secret. She started sobbing again and asked me not to get angry. I got really nervous when she said that. She cried for a bit before I urged her to just say it because she was making me uneasy. Then it came out. She said she found out she was pregnant not long after I had left and that she got an abortion because she wasn't sure who the father was. She thought that if it turned out to be Dave's, there would be no room for reconciliation and she felt she had to do it. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I was in shock and she started begging even more not to let this be the end of our relationship. I just went numb. I asked her to leave, and she begged me to stay, saying we still needed to talk. All this begging was simply infuriating, especially coupled with the news I had just heard. 
I asked her how far along she was when she found out she was pregnant, and she said a few weeks. Then it hit me. Wait. You said in an email that you only started having sex with Dave about a week before I found out. Was that a lie? She nodded. She nodded. She explained that she only said that because she didn't want to hurt me with the details and was trying to minimize it. She confessed that it was physical for less than a month. She tried to console me, but I pushed her away. I asked her to leave and never come back. She tried saying something, but I just started yelling at her to leave. She asked if we could talk again once I had processed everything, and I refused. I told her I had found a job in another state and would be moving as soon as the divorce was underway. In our state, there is a two-month cool-off period after you file. I had already planned on doing this and was just finalizing everything before I resigned from my current job. I had already given my boss notice at that point. When she heard this, it was more of the same crying and pleading like before. I told her to leave or I would call the police. She reluctantly left, and I just lay on the floor wondering where I went wrong. How did my marriage get to this point in such a short period? I just couldn't understand it. I was somewhat sure of the divorce before, but after she and I spoke, I was now more sure of my decision than ever before. I ignored all efforts on Sue's end for contact again. However, a few days ago, this was on Thursday, I received a phone call from my mom that Sue was in the hospital. Apparently, she was hospitalized for a drug overdose. This all felt like a nightmare. I still don't know how to process all of this. Why is all of this happening? I visited Sue in the hospital, and she seemed to be okay, but she was checked into a psych ward. That's where things are at now. I still have no idea why she would do this, and the time I visited her, she was asleep. It hurts because I still love her, and right now I'm just happy she's okay. I haven't been thinking of the divorce given what's going on right now. How do I even proceed? There are probably a lot of important details I'm leaving out, but adding them will just make this unbearably long. I just need suggestions on what I should do next. Well, folks, that's all. Thank you all for listening. Please like, comment, and share the video if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when we upload the next video. Take care.